This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. It was, we are told, about the size of a large doghouse. And it was heavy. It was the kinetograph, the machine Thomas Edison and his assistant William Kennedy Laurie Dixon invented to photograph a series of pictures. When the pictures were shown in a peep show device called a kinetoscope, they created the illusion of motion. Because the earliest kinetograph was not particularly portable, the people who made the movement came to it. In France, the camera developed by the Lumiere brothers, Louis Jean and Auguste, was more portable and was taken out to photograph the motions of everyday life. What moved in front of Edison's kinetograph were movements staged for the camera. In late 1894, a film of a band drill was taken in Edison's Black Maria studio. That film was a scene from a play entitled A Milk White Flag, which had opened at Hoyt's Theater in New York on October 8, 1894. In the first year after the Kinetoscope Company was founded in 1894, other acts in the company's films were A Strong Man, A Contortionist, Annie Oakley, Buffalo Bill, May Lucas, a solo dancer from a then current New York stage hit, A Gaiety Girl, Professor Batty's Troop of Trained Bears, Monkey Acts, and Trained Cats and Dogs. Each of these acts was just that, an act that had been created and sometimes actually written, even if not specifically for filming, before it appeared in front of the camera. From the very beginning, American films were structured or written before filming. The two earliest known intentional uses of written plans for films both occurred in 1897. The length of the films had increased beyond the original 50 feet allowed by the earliest cameras. One of the subjects that helped increase the length of films was the filmed prize fight. When the rights to the Corbett Fitzsimmons fight were sold to the Enoch Rector Veriscope Company, the enterprising Sigmund Pop Lubin arranged a staged reenactment of the fight for his own company. Using two freight handlers from the Pennsylvania Railroad terminal to portray the fighters. The director of the film used a round by round, blow by blow newspaper account of the fight as the script from which he directed the boxers. In the same year, W.B. Hurd, the American representative of the Lumiere Company, approached Rich G. Holliman with an idea for a film. Holliman was the owner of the Aden Massé, which not only showed films but also exhibited death masks of Napoleon. Executions of wax criminals by wax elephants, an automaton chess player, and a program of song and sometimes dance. Hurd had obtained the rights to do a film of a production in the Bohemian village of Horitz of the Oberammergau version of the Passion Play. When Holliman hesitated, Hurd sold the rights to the famous theatrical producers Claw and Erlinger. Holliman saw the film and was not impressed, so he decided to make his own film. Holliman remembered an attempt some 17 years before to present a passion play in New York. The author was Salmon Morse, a great patriarchal figure of a man with haughty carriage and a long white beard. His play had been directed in San Francisco by impresario David Belasco in 1879. The play was lavishly mounted for a New York production in 1880, but was banned before it opened by the mayor of New York on the grounds it offended religious interests. The costumes were returned to one of the backers, customer Albert G. Eves, along with a copy of the manuscript of the play. Holliman got Eves to join in the production of the film, and as early film historian Terry Ramsey recounts, Salmi Morse's ill fated script was brought to light to become the first motion picture scenario.